uh, again, I would encourage Christians not to get hung up on those kind of semantics. You know, it's it's clear that what we're directed to do as Christians is to do the will of God. We're told to pray to God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. To me, that that's all we need to do. We don't have to try to, uh, you know, get into the theology of whether uh, God the Father and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit all are right. one or are three different entities. All right. Uh, let me ask you this question. Come from the live chat. A uh, listener or viewer wants to know, why is Christianity more worthy of his or her faith than any other religion? I mean, obviously the Buddhists say do no harm. An, an excellent, an excellent question. You know what? An individual person, an individual person uh, can only uh, assimilate their belief structure from their own personal experience. Let's be honest here. If God doesn't call an individual. That individual will not know anything about God. If a person is an atheist, or a Buddhist, or, uh, uh, or, or any other religion, un until the day comes where God calls that individual and opens up that person's mind to understand the Christian calling, then of course that person will know nothing about Christianity. So we, we, we can't really say to ourselves, how, how, can any, how can anybody know whether one religion is right or not? One can only know what you know inside your own belief structure and inside your own heart. So I believe what happens is as we go through life, we go through the journey of life, we, we go through certain experiences. And sooner or later, I do believe God brings about events in our lives that force us to choose, force us to choose what we will believe and which way we will go. Now, having said that, you know what? I've I've actually uh, have a friend who's a Buddhist, and uh, and I was actually at his wedding. Um, my fiance and I were actually attended a Buddhist wedding. So I mean, you know, you you got to be careful when you're Christian. I think not to not to think that because you believe in Christianity, therefore other religions should be shunned. I, I believe I believe we should be very careful that uh, as Christians, that although we believe and we know that that Christianity and the Judeo-Christian Bible is the one true, uh, the one true religion, yeah. uh, that, that's, that's because God has revealed that to us. That's the only reason we know that, because God has allowed us to know that. Mm -hmm. I, was at the, I was at Starbucks, and they have uh, little sayings on their cups. This is, this is an actual cup, but uh, they have uh, the uh, sort of uh, the paper cups, and they have... Uh, sayings on there and one of the sayings I read the other day said that uh, that if you are unfortunate enough to be born in Africa and then you have no money and then if you're fortunate enough to be born in America you have money and the world will never be right until uh, the disparity is corrected and I thought to myself well why doesn't this writer who wrote that saying on the Starbucks cup give half of his wages to the person in Africa and quit uh, philosophizing about it and do something by you know, demonstrating their core belief that there should be an equalization there. But of course, uh, that would be what we would term here in the States as a liberal comment because what the liberals want to do in this country is take our money and do their good works with it. Uh, so I was... As I, as I thought about that, I thought, well, you know, there are some religions like that, too, that want others to do but not to say. But are there, is there any other religion that you know of that can do the things that you say uh, pretty much in the Christian line but not be a Christian and still meet sort of a, a spiritual requirement of God's approval? You know, there is, a, there is actually a scripture in the Bible which addresses that, which, which actually literally states that when the the people of this world do what is right and good, they are they are more religious than those who would call themselves religious. So that is true. A, a person, if a, if a, 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 I, I believe a person, if they're doing what is right and good, uh, they can certainly have God's approval. But I believe we as Christians also need to remember that we are taught very clearly that no matter how good we are, we are all sinners. Every one of us is a sinner. We all, we all need the sacrifice of Jesus Christ to redeem us. So no matter how good of a life we live or we try to live, we can't be perfect and we, we certainly can't meet God's approval and cannot be free of sin on our own. We can only 
uh, overcome sin through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. But I do believe that there are many people who maybe have never heard of Christianity, who, who, who don't consider themselves Christian, who may be trying to live a, a, a good life. And I believe that when the time comes, uh, God, will, God will call those people, and they will uh, have an opportunity to know the one true God. Hmm. Do you think it's fair if somebody is, uh, say, in that uh, African country and they are, uh, you know, I, I, I agree to the extent that if you're born there, it's like you are destined for poverty and famine. Uh, I mean, is, is that random that they are born there? I don't believe anything in the universe is random. I, I believe that uh, that God has a plan, and that that plan uh, is a, is you know we're told in the scripture that uh, a sparrow cannot fall down dead without God knowing about it, uh, and we're also told God has every hair on our heads numbered. That's the scripture in the Bible that tells us that there's there's nothing random. Certainly, poverty is a reality, and I believe that the reason for poverty is because of the evil system, this triumvirate of power we have of governments, banks, and large corporations. They're causing the poverty. I mean, if, if, you, if you didn't, if, if the governments of this world and the system of this world didn't create the horrendous problems they're creating, there wouldn't be, there wouldn't be any poverty. There, I mean, certainly we're told Christ himself said the poor will always be with us, but let's remember poverty is a relative thing. A person can be poor and still have enough to eat and still have a roof over their head, right? So I believe if the world, when the world is run properly under Jesus Christ, and the laws are just and fair, okay, and everyone has birthright land and no one needs to be homeless, uh, there will not be any, there won't be any need for anyone to be starving or destitute. Mm -hmm. So the starvation and poverty and horrendously bad living conditions, which the majority of the world lives in, is because of the system we're living under. They're actually creating that, 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 that pain. Uh, let me ask you something. Uh, you sound like you say there's a, a, a sort of a battle that's going to go on, and then there's going to be this reign of goodness. So we have to, as a civilization, as a, as a human race, have to go through some some turmoils, some catastrophes, and then on the other side of that uh, is going to be a sort of a, a new uh, a new order. Absolutely, absolutely, I believe that uh, the, the 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 Book of Revelation speaks very clearly of the millennial rule of Jesus Christ and it says in the end time when all these things are fulfilled Jesus Christ will return and he will rule the earth for a thousand years and during that time Satan will be banished and there will be no more demonic influence and and that will be a time of that will be a time of peace but I believe that before that comes yes I do believe there will be cataclysmic events leading up to that mm -hmm. All right, and uh, as we get toward the end of the interview, uh, Mike, uh, Lucas, uh, anything else in that book that you have on your website, Satan's Government, is it satangovernment.com? Uh, anything yes. you'd like to say about your website and or your book? Uh, you can, if you're interested in buying the book, uh, you, can, you can buy it online. You can log on to www.satansgovernment.com. And you can uh, you can purchase the book online. I'd like to mention you can also read it if you, if you can't afford the book. If you'd like to read it, you can read it online. The text is free. But for those who would like to purchase a copy, uh, I, I believe the current price is only $20, and you can purchase it online through Cafe Press. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Mike Lucas, I want to thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us this evening here on The Edge, and uh, can I have you back again sometime? I would love to. Anytime, Daniel. All right. Well, thank you for uh, being on the program, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for having me. Okay. Bye-bye. You have been listening to The Edge with Daniel Ott. To subscribe to The Edge newsletter, log on to TheEdgeAM.com. That's TheEdgeAM.com, where you can find out more about the guests and topics discussed on the air. The Edge is being brought to you by Internet Solutions, home of affordable website design and low-cost Internet access. Visit Internet Solutions at ES4.com. That's ES4.com. Until next week, for the Edge Radio Broadcast, I'm Chris Moore. See you on the Edge. News on the USA Radio Network is next.